With this presentation, I want to demonstrate with this plastic model how the fasciolata pass-through technique looks and how it works. This here would be a left stifle. This here would be the lateral aspect. This is the medial aspect. The patella is right here. The tibial crest is right here. The, the, basically, the dog is put in left lateral recumbency. And what well, we're interested in, what this uh, umbilical tape here represents the fasciolata tendon. And a dog this size, that tendon would normally be about one and a half centimeters wide, uh, so keep that in mind. It basically attaches down here to the lateral tibial crest, and it goes all the way up, the patella's right here, all the way up to here where the fasciolata muscle is located. The sartorius muscle is here on the medial side, on the lateral side is the biceps femoris. So what the, inci the original incision is a lateral arthrotomy right tight to the patella because you want to get as much of that tendon as possible and you extend it right along the sartorius all the way up to the fasciolata muscle. At that point, then you lift that tendon up and you find the demarcation or attachment with the biceps femoris and then you, again, you basically carefully dissect with scissors all the way up to the fasciolata muscle. At that point, you're going to end up with a flap of the fasciolata. And it is about this long in a 70-pound dog. And then all the fascia is cleaned off of it with a scalpel blade. That will be shown in the actual procedure. And basically, so at this point, you basically have got this tendon who's attached down here, and it's all cleaned up. I show in the, uh, uh, the other video on the surgical side how I put a handle on the tip of this. So what I do at this point, I basically take my hemostat and I punch it right through here, and then I grab my assistant hands me the handle, basically suture, so I take that fasciolata tendon and I bring it right across the front of the patella tendon. Okay? So at this point, <clears throat> I rotate the leg and right here you can see the fabella on the lateral aspect. You can't normally see it in real life, but you can feel it very easily with your, with your, in this case, my left thumb. I basically use a curved Kelly, and I punch right directly behind there, and I come out right through the center of the joint. I basically luxate the patella and put that inflection, and basically at at this point, my assistant hands me the, again, the handle, and I pull this all right through the joint. At this point, the patella goes back to where it normally resides in the patellar groove, and basically, this comes out right behind the patella. So at this point, I basically suture the sartorius to the bicep femoris. I put in, usually I use number one PDS sutures. I close up the entire arthrotomy, and then I'm sitting here with this fasciolata tendon across the patella, coming out behind the, behind the uh, fabella, and I take it, and I basically, again with my hemostat, I come through here underneath. Open that up. And basically grab my tendon and I pull it through and I I pull on this as tight as I can. And I mean I put in a lot enough tension so that as you can see here the tendon is actually causing an indentation of the patella tendon. So at this point, I'm going to bring that around, I'm going to get another clamp, and clamp it there, and then I'm going to put about 
five sutures on either side, so I'll have at least 10 or 12 sutures that basically attach the fascia lata tendon to itself. The main landmarks uh, in order to determine where to make the incision for this procedure is number one is to palpate the greater trochanter and I typically do this when I already have the drape over the dog but you can feel it and then I put a towel clamp right there so I know where that uh, greater trochanter is. The other is the tibial crest which is right here where the uh, patella tendon attaches. So those are the two main landmarks. In my incision, which will be exaggerated today because the purpose of this is to show extensive anatomy, is going to be normally it's going to be for mid femur, just lateral stifle, uh, just distal to tibial crest. So the incision starts mid femur, just lateral to the patella, and this size dog about one inch distal to the tibial crest. So at this point, I'm going to start dissecting all the fascia off of the tendon. And I can show you so we can see all the parameters of where we're going today. Stop. The significant anatomy for this procedure, this is a left stifle. The patella would be right here. This here would be the tensor fascia lata muscle. It's a relatively small piece of muscle. On the medial aspect, you have the sartorius, which extends all the way from the uh, pelvis down to the medial stifle. On the lateral aspect is a large muscle mass called the biceps femoris. You can see its delineation right here. And the tensor fascia lata muscle, mus tensor fascia lata tendon is this white tissue that extends from the sartorius to the biceps up to the tensor fascia lata muscle. So we are going to remove this tendon from its connections and that will ultimately be used to restabilize the, uh, the sta uh, stifle. Cool. At this point we're going to make our lateral arthrotomy and the goal is to harvest as much of that tendon as possible so basically you're going to feel palpate the patella and make your arthrotomy just lateral. There you can see I'm into the joint. I actually cut down and incorporate just a small sliver of the patella tendon as well. So at this point we're going to extend the arthrotomy proximal and to do that we're going to put the mantle scissors underneath and it goes directly to the sartorius muscle. And make sure that is just wide open. So the next step is to flex the joint and examine the internal structures. That would basically be the anterior cruciate ligament to see what kind of condition it is. If it's damaged badly, which it generally is, I remove it. Uh, but before I can do that, there usually is some fat here in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and get as much of that fat out of there as I possibly can. That'll just give me much better visualization of what's going on inside the joint. Here you can see, again, this dog has a totally intact cruciate ligament. And you can see that right here. It attaches down here, distal, medial and it goes back up and attaches proximal lateral. Directly in front is the meniscal attachments here and right behind this would be the anterior cruciate ligament right here. As you can see it's a fairly wide structure. So this would be the anterior cruciate ligament right here. So at this point we're going to remove the ACL ligament um, and this is appropriate because many dogs you'll go in they'll have a partial tear and you'll have to remove uh, uh, what is left of the ACL uh, in order to complete the procedure. So to do that I put a hemostat, a mosquito hemostat underneath it and then I cut this very close to the distal condyle 
of the femur. You can put traction on the mosquito hemostat in order to complete that tear. So at this point, I'm going to cut down medial to the collateral ligament. You can generally see quite well where the meniscus uh, goes back in the joint. So I basically go back about halfway, press down quite hard, and free up this front portion of the meniscus, which is right here. So the next step is to grab that front portion of the meniscus and you can use the meniscal clamp as leverage and you can cut back and just tease that meniscus out little bit by little bit. Obviously always making sure not to go and here you can see the back of the meniscus right here that's where it's curving around making sure you don't go too far medial. So at this point, I'm basically going to cut across the back of that meniscus and get it out of here. With this meniscus being fully intact, it is a little bit more difficult than to remove one that has got a pocket handle tear. So the thumb forceps are attached here to the fascial lata tendon. The mosquito forcep is attached to the joint capsule. And what I'm going to do is in order to start separating them is to use the scalpel handle and put it in there and just start. So now we've grabbed the tensor fascial lata tendon with the allus tissue forceps and I'm going to gently dissect the joint capsule from the tendon. Again, I always err on the side of cutting more joint capsule than tendon. I don't want to sacrifice the tendon at all. If I cut the joint capsule short, there you can see it dissects out pretty nicely. If you leave the joint capsule a little bit short, it is not going to be a problem. Now we are going to cut the anterior medial aspect of the tensor fascia lata tendon from the sartorius. So I'm just snuggling right up the sartorius. Cut that. You can see it goes quite a bit medially. When you come up here, you can see there's a little bleb of muscle here. That is not the fascia lata. You want to go a little bit lateral and go around that muscle and go all the way up to the tensor fascia lata. So when I'm doing this, I'm usually wearing a headlight, and you can see. Where I stop my incision is right where the muscle is. So I know I'm at the end of the tensor fascia lata tendon. Cool. To ensure the fact that we get the entire tendon on the lateral aspect, the attachment of the biceps femoris, you can see the attachment of the biceps right here. I'm going to poke a hole right at that juncture, extend it up about two centimeters. So I poke my hole right here, and now I'm going to extend uh, my incision here all the way up to the fascia lata muscle. And again, I'm going to do this to make sure I get all of the tendon. If I get a little muscle, that's okay. If I take a few millimeters of biceps femoris with the tendon, the dog is not going to miss that at all. So I go up until I can see again the fascia lata muscle and we're just going to go ahead 
and cut that completely, free it up. So we're going to continue our dissection of the fascial lateral tendon from the biceps femoris muscle. So with a curved male scissors, Metzenbaum, I'm just going to cut stick. As you can see, I'm sticking really close to the muscle. And down here, you can see how it flares out. I'm going to continue my dissection to just hug the muscle so that my attachment is going to be about three centimeters in width. Again, just complete there. At this point, the fascia lata tendon is completely removed from its attachments to the sartorius, the fascia lata muscle, the biceps femoris. At this point, you can see we have the tensor fascia lata tendon completely removed from its attachment to the sartorius, to the fascia lata muscle, and to the biceps femoris. Again, and it flares out down here, so it's considerably wider down here than it is uh, in the middle portion of the tendon. Okay. I typically like to get about four or five good bites of suture in the end of this tendon. So now we're going to punch the fascial lateral tendon through the hole made here in the distal patella. So at this point you can see where the fascia lata basically goes from distal lateral to distal medial, which is where the anterior cruciate ligament normally attaches, so we can reconfigure the anatomy as accurately as we possibly can. Let's do that. So I am just above the fabella, which is by my thumb, so now I'm going to punch this through the back of the joint and come out in the front medial aspect of the stifle. There you can see we've, we come all the way through. I'm going to grab my handle and then we are going to work the tendon through the joint. So at this point I'm going to pull on the handle but I'm also going to push down on the tendon hoping not to rip the handle out of the tip of the tendon. If I do then I'm just going to pull the tendon off, put another handle in, and keep doing this until I get it through. I think the key on this is to be patient. And don't worry if you pull the handle out, you can always put another one in. I've never had one I haven't been able to complete. You can see the tendon is just starting to poke through. So at this point we're going to extend the joint. grab the tendon and pull it on through. Okay, don't move. So we're going to take the distal end of the fasciolata and I'm going to reach underneath the part of the fasciolata that goes over the patella tendon and grab that I'm going to bring it around underneath the fascia lata tendon. And then I'm going to take a clamp underneath this portion. I'm going to bring it around and clamp it to itself. At this point, we are going to put about 10 sutures attaching the fascia lata tendon to itself. So to complete this part of the procedure, I'm going to grab the distal biceps femoris, take a deep bite, and then my needle is going to go through both the deep and superficial layers of the fascial lata tendon. And I'm going to put a surgeon's knot in this and clamp it right down.
that just offers one additional layer of stability to this reconstruction. Okay, good. Um, just a few things here. This tall clamp here is located right over the greater trocanner, so it holds the drape, but it also is, it basically is a milestone for me so I know where I'm going. The incision usually starts mid femur, right between obviously the uh, lateral condyle and here. It extends lateral aspect of the joint just below the tibial tuberosity. I want to dissect medial, medially until I can see the uh, sartorius muscle right here. And I'll explain why that's important in just a minute. So here we have complete visualization, visualization of the sartorius, the patel right here, obviously the uh, tibial tuberosity. I do make a lateral arthrotomy. We want to preserve as much of the fascial lot of tendon as we can, so the incision is made just lateral to the patella. You can see we're in the joint. Now I actually take a little bit of the patella tendon in the, uh, in the graft. At this point, Hillary's going to extend the joint. I want to be able to see the sartorius, and I'm going to go right up to the sartorius. You can see some remnants of the cruciate ligament anterior, creating the cruciate ligament right here, so I'm going to remove those. Grab those with my mosquito. Gently cut them out with an 11 blade. Pause. All right. So the remnants of the Crane crucial ligament are now out of there. It looks pretty clean. I'm going to put in a retractor. There you go. We do have a minor tear of the medial meniscus. So I'm going to remove that. I make my incision on the medial aspect of the medial femoral condyle. So right here, I am just going to cut straight down, right to the bone. At this point, you can see the meniscus here, you can see the tear right there. I can, maybe not on the film. So I basically follow this back, right on the edge. So that the front aspect of the meniscus is loose. Then I grab it with a meniscal clamp. By retracting this, I'm pushing down on the patella, but I can see very nicely in here. And I'm just going to gently cut around the meniscus, around the back edge. And there it is. We want to separate the tendon whoopsie, from the joint capsule. So I'm going to swing over here. To do that, basically, I just lift up the tendon 
and I just undermine it with the surgical handle. Then I'm going to grab an Alice. And Hillary's going to hold that right straight up in the air while I separate. Here, you want to move that light a little bit? I'm going to separate the tendon from the joint capsule. And when in doubt, I always err on leaving a little more tissue on the tendon. If you're a little light in the joint capsule, that's not a problem postoperatively. So basically, I've got this now separated right down here. It's about as low as I can go at this point. So I'm going to just put this over here to hold that out of our way. So you see, this is the fascial lot of tendon here, sartorius over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right next to the sartorius, making sure, again, to get as much of the fascial lot of tendon as I possibly can. So I'm going to really go right down here. It's pretty deep in here. I could make my incision four inches longer, but I don't like to do that because I don't need to for my sake. So basically, I'm dissecting up until I literally can see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of muscle at the very tip of that. That's what you want to see. So at this point, we want to free up the other side, the attachment of the fascial lot attendant with the biceps femoris. And I do that by rolling this back. You can see the delineation very easily right here. I just punch a hole. There we go. Hillary's going to lift up on the uh, skin again. Okay. And again, I sometimes get a little muscle on this cut, but that's okay. I just want to make sure I get all the tendon. Sometimes you got to be a little gymnastic to do this. tricky sometimes to get the top. Just take your time eventually you get it. This pulls right out. I always like to see just a little muscle to make sure that I got the entire tendon. Okay. That way I know I got as much tendon as was there. So at this point we're going to trim around the sartorius and, and basically uh, leave it attached at the proximal lateral tibia. And if I get a little bit, at this point when I'm going to blow it, then I flare it out. I don't come straight down. I flare out. Again, all area on the side. So you see my attachment here is about twice the width of the uh, tenor itself. So at this point, I'm just going to leave that right there. I'm going to cover it with a moist gauze pad to keep the tissues happy. Now I'm going to put in a couple sutures connecting the biceps femoris and the sartorius. I'll just do that at the top at this point. Let's see here. I'll just look that way right there. Again, you can see the biceps femoris is 
pretty obvious here. Basically, we're just going to take a bite through that. The sartorius is a little less distinct. I do that more by feel. There you go. I find that you do not need to suture all the way up to the top. Again, to do that effectively, you would have to extend your incision another three or four inches. And uh, I've had no issues by not doing that. I usually put suture in right there. This one here is going to go above that one. which obviously has no structural integrity whatsoever. So I use a 10 blade, very gently scrape some of the fat off. Remember again, you can see my little muscle up there. Hillary knows whenever I see that, I'm very, very happy. I can cut that off because that. On the outside of the tendon, I usually start midway and clean it up the same way I did the inside. There's a little muscle here, which again, muscle has no real integrity, so I'm just going to trim that right off. Then I'm going to have Hillary hold that out, so with my medicine bomb, I can go ahead and uh, clean off the lower half. Again, this is done very carefully. Just lift up that fascia. Making sure I don't cut into the tendon. Okay, that looks good. So we can pass the fascia lot of tendon through the center of the joint. So to do that, I usually take four bites. If I use less than four, oftentimes my handle will tear off of the tendon. Sometimes it will happen even with four. Everyone is a little bit different. There we go. So I'm going to grab our suture handle here with a mosquito forceps. And in order to make the anatomy correct, the craniocruciate ligament attaches anterior medial, medial and distal lateral. So in order to recreate that, is I'm going to take my hemostat and just punch right through. You can see I'm just on the other side of the patella. I'm going to make a little opening there. I'm going to grab my handle. I'm 
and bring this through. Okay. So there again, you can see it basically goes from the lateral side around the uh, patella tendon and that is critical as you'll see here in the next few minutes. Okay, flexion. So at this point we're going to flex the joint. And we're going to put two mosquitoes on here. Just like that. That's like four millimeters apart. At this point, I'm going to select a Kelly hemostat, curved Kelly. They're not all created equal. I usually pick the one that's got the smallest tip. At this point, Hillary and I are going to switch sides and I'll explain how I'm going to bring this tendon through the joint. Complete flexion. Whoopsie. I'm going to get my lights rearranged here. And how this works, right here you can feel, you can actually see it here, this is the fabella, the lateral fabella. And I want to basically punch through just dorsal to the fabella. So to do that, I just feel the fabella, I feel right here. And this can take a while. Sometimes you just punch it through. And then I, as you can see the tip right there, and I'm just creating a little more space. So at this point, Hillary's going to pass the handle to me. Okay. I'm going to bring it through. Now, that went extremely well. <laughs> it doesn't often come through that easy. Sometimes I literally have to hang on to the handle with my uh, Kelly and I sometimes have to literally push on this end and pull on this end. Fortunately, we didn't have to do that today, uh, but at this point, Hillary and I are going to go back to want to close the arthrotomy. So I'm going to go right back up to where I started, and again, you can see the biceps from Morris right here. I'm going to grab that. This is the sartorius right here. We're going to close this whole joint. I'm using number one uh, PDS for uh, this part of the procedure, which has worked extremely well for me. So here I'm, I'm also picking up the joint capsule.
biceps is uh, femoris is stretched out about as far as it can. So at this point, I'm just closing up the uh, the joint capsule with the uh, patellar tendon. We want to stabilize and secure this tendon. And to me, that is the real beauty of this particular procedure. I grab that tendon. At this point, I'm going to stretch it as tight as I can. You can see the patella tendon is indented. Are you getting there? I like to put that much tension on it. Say that again. Repeat that. I have the enough tension on the fascial lot of tendon that is actually indenting the patella tendon. I like that really secure. It's going to reach underneath my loop here. Grab the tendon and wrap it around. The beauty of this procedure, I think, is number one, everything is natural. There's no foreign materials in here. Uh, there's no cutting of bone, there's no drilling of bone, there's no plates, there's no screws. So I'm basically going to take this and pull it real tight. And I'm going to put my clamp under here. I'm going to bring that around and clamp it to itself. The other thing that I love about this procedure, and I think that's why it works so well, is you have tendon stabilization inside the joint and outside. I've done over 1,500 of these and I've never had one break down. At this point, it's pretty critical, I'm using Ott proline for this. In here, the patella tendon is indented. That will stretch out uh, as this uh, dog heals. And um, at this point, I'm just going to put some simple interrupted sutures in. So I'm just doing a simple interrupted here to draw this together. Then I'm going to go through with some 2 odd PDS. Close the skin. Okay. 